Episode 37, The Second Battle of Toad Town The Koopa Cruiser rumbled through the sky. The sun was rising, dyeing the aircraft's blue hull a tinted orange color. Cobal stood in one of the cruiser's tiny cabins, on which Toadsworth was laying on a simple white cot. Strike stood beside him. The old Toad had finally agreed to talk about the mysterious Skull's Fortis Kewl. I'll admit, I don't know much. Toadsworth admitted, while propped up on his pillow. I never saw the man, let alone spoke with him. Anything is appreciated? Strike replied, crossing his arms. The orange light of the sunrise filtered through the window, illuminating the mostly bare, closet-sized room. Cobal was nearly touching Toadsworth's bed. It was plain to see that the Koopa Cruiser's cabins had been designed for sleep and nothing more. Cobal wondered if his father would like to hear anything about their enemy. He had, more likely than not, killed Admiral Bobbery, after all. If Toadsworth knew anything worthwhile, he'd pass it on. Skull's Fortis Kewl? Well, as he said, fought in the first Koopa War. Toadsworth said, before coughing. I don't know his history. I do know one thing, though. He fought on the Mushroom Kingdom side. What? Cobal exclaimed. Why would a former Mushroom Kingdom ally be trying to prevent the escape of several of the kingdom's greatest heroes? Then, Cobal started to ask, but Toadsworth interrupted him. Not so hasty, lad, Toadsworth said. I wasn't finished yet. Skulls was believed to have been a Mercenary of sorts, although exactly who hired him, nobody knows. It certainly wasn't King Alfred Toadstool, the dear princess departed father. I can understand why he was hired though. I'm sure you both know we've never been warriors. My father always told me that fighting toads was like going to war against a flock of chickens. Strike said. All they do is make a lot of noise and run away when you startle them. Oh, indeed. Toadsworth nodded. My race has never had warlike inclinations. If it hadn't have been for that man Antonio, and his brother Giovanni, the Mushroom Kingdom would have fallen under Koopa Dominion long before you two were born. Cobal nodded. Antonio. That was the guy who that old Dry Bones had mentioned back at the barracks of Lava Lake Keep. A hero beyond compare and the rumored father of the Mario brothers. Somebody who people claimed was history's most powerful fighter. Totes worth. Cobal said slowly. Skulls. He claimed to be Antonio's equal, and the old King Morton's too. Is that... Is that true? Totes worth sighed. Sorry, my boy, but I can't say he admitted. I personally think he over-exaggerated his words just a bit. Many canyons in the Mushroom Kingdom were created from Antonio and Morton's fights, you know. But... He was powerful, or so the reports claim. He wielded a strange sort of magic that gave him powers like telekinesis on a very large scale. If anybody could have fought equally with those two, I'd take a guess and say it would be him. Cobal nodded. That made him nervous. Just what kind of a guy was this Koopa? Do you know anything more? Strike asked. Toadsworth sighed. I'm afraid not. He admitted. It was a long, long time ago, and as I said, this is all hearsay. I never got a chance to witness Skull's fight on the battlefield. I saw him for the first time yesterday. Then thank you for your time. Strike nodded. Cobal looked at the window, where the sun was dyeing the clouds pink. They were almost back at the Mushroom Kingdom. Luigi would know what to do, he told himself. If anybody could defeat Skulls, it would be him.
the airship slowly lowered itself to the ground. Luigi sighed and stood up. It had been a lonely flight from Koopa Central to the Mushroom Kingdom. There were only two toads on the repurposed airship for his company, the helmsman and the engineer. Neither had been able to talk to him and Luigi wasn't certain they even wanted to. After all, they were members of Fire Flower, and he had refused Fire Flower's offer of an alliance. Toad Town was visible in the distance, the tall red-roofed tower of Peach's Castle rising over the rolling green plains around them. There was a tall wall around the town now, but aside from that it looked the same as it always had to Luigi. The sight of it made him sad. Back in the old days Yoshi had come to Toad Town all the time, for banquets and parties, kart races and tennis tournaments. But now that Yoshi was no more. It was like he had died with Mario. The leader of Fire Flower was nothing more than a terrorist, completely different from the brave and honorable hero Luigi had known. Luigi made a move to leap off the airship, before the helmsman spoke. L. Luigi. He said, stepping away from the wheel. He was a red-capped toad, wearing the typical toad vest. I. I'm really sorry about Yoshi. Yeah. Luigi nodded. I. I really wanted this to work out, you know. I've been with Fire Flower ever since the beginning. The toad admitted. At first we fought just like we did when... When your brother was around, but he started to get desperate. First he started executing the prisoners, and after that it wasn't long until his attacks starting hurting all of Bowser's people, not just the soldiers. Sometimes I wonder if we're even still the good guys. You could come over to my side. Luigi suggested. We could always use more people, and we'd never... Never do anything like Yoshi did. The toad's face was troubled. I believe you. He agreed. But... But I just don't know. How long has your resistance been going? Has it even been a month yet? I can't just leave Fire Flower, Luigi, I can't. Well, if you change your mind, we're always open. Luigi replied before leaping off the ship and landing on the soft grass. There was a whir of propellers and a gust of wind that nearly knocked his hat off his head, and then the airship took off. It was a bright morning, Luigi thought, although it was rather cool. The pale pink skies shone of Toad Town as he approached, with a few puffy white clouds drifting by. The wall that surrounded Toad Town was not a pretty thing. It was around 8 meters high and built of a patchwork of materials, uncut stones, broken up war machines, the walls and floorboards of toad houses that had been damaged beyond repair. Luigi even glimpsed a faded Koopa Troop insignia on a rusted metal plate. Yet what it lacked in beauty it seemingly had in sturdiness. Luigi noted that every bit of junk had been fitted together like the pieces of a puzzle and cement had been poured in to fill the cracks. It was Toadbert's work, to be sure, with some helpful ingenuity from Toadette, of course. Luigi was also pleased to see that on the top of the wall, there were plenty of bill blasters, along with a few custom-made catapults. He smiled proudly. It was still a far cry from being a fortress city, but this wasn't the same Toad Town that Bowser could just fly in and do whatever he liked. There were Toads patrolling the wall top holding spears. A green-capped one gave a shout as he saw Luigi. Everybody! He screamed excitedly. Open the gates! Luigi's back! Luigi! A yellow toad exclaimed. Hey, welcome back, Luigi! He exclaimed, waving at him. Luigi waved back. Hey! He smiled. I see you've been getting lots of work done. The gates creaked open. They were made of scrap metal, much like the rest of the wall, but reinforced so that he didn't doubt they could tank a few bob-bombs before giving way. 
as Luigi stepped into the town, the inhabitants ran to meet him. I saw you on TV, you got that coupling good. Mushroom City's thriving, there ain't a single toad in prison anymore. The Koopa Fortress over at Flower Fields fell yesterday, who knew Wario could be such a good ally? Luigi, of course, couldn't reply to all of them so he was reduced to waving like a celebrity as he walked up the brick road towards the beautiful castle that rose above the city. These happy sounds brought joy to his heart. Aside from a few empty plots where the destroyed toad houses had been cleared away and some shoddy patching on some of the mushroom-shaped roofs, Toad Town looked much the same as it had used to look. There was no more sign of Koopa oppression in it at all except for the wall that surrounded it. It was a warm sight after the cold cynicism of Fire Flower. Things could go back to the way they used to be, he promised himself. As Luigi passed the town square, there was no Princess Peach statue on the fountain yet, but he didn't doubt some sculptor was working on it, the Toad Brigade ran to meet him. Luigi! Toadette shouted, her pigtails flying behind her as she ran down the road. I can't believe it. You beat Roy. Luigi sighed. Yeah. He agreed. But Fire Flower. Toadette's face fell. What happened? She said in a voice full of concern. The news feed cut out after the battle was over. Let's just say that Fire Flower and us aren't going to be working together. He said resentfully. Even if we're on the same side, they might even be worse than Bowser. It was true, really, at least as far as the old Bowser had been. He might have launched a few raids and blew up a few houses from time to time, but completely destroying a large city with tons of innocents would have been a kind of thing even King Bowser would have never done. It was sad to think how far Yoshi had fallen, although who knew what war crimes Bowser had committed after Mario and Peach's wedding had broken him. I'd suggest you don't lose sleep over Fire Flower. Bank Toad suggested optimistically. We've been making tons of progress ourselves. Really? Luigi asked, his eyes widening. Like? What? Come on, let's discuss this in the castle. Toadette said, turning around. Luigi nodded and they began to walk up the path. The yellow toad, Billy, moved closer to Luigi as they continued strolling past the toad houses. Billy no longer looked lazy and childish, Luigi realized. In the toad's eyes there burned a new determination. Luigi! Me and the others you gave tips to have been working really hard. He said fiercely, tightening his hands into a fist. It was hard training, without you there, until Toad Bird found a way to hack into the dark web. There are apparently a lot of Mario videos floating around there, and we've all learned too much. He punched the air, a grin on his face. Plus, I've been working on my own martial arts techniques, and I think you would be really proud. Luigi was genuinely impressed. Admittedly, in the past he had been disappointed by the Toad Guard. One would think that a princess who was kidnapped nearly every week would be surrounded constantly by the most elite security detail, but the guards threw down their spears and ran at the slightest hint Bowser was about to appear. It appeared now that the new generation of Toad Town's defenders were no about to be so cowardly. I... I'm really proud of you. Luigi smiled, patting Billy on the shoulder. Hey! Maybe we're even strong enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Koopa Troop now. I'll say that again. Toadette laughed. With the help of the Wario brothers, we've actually taken down a couple small fortresses. The Civil War has taken up so much of the Empire's time, they simply can't defend their territories around here. Plus, these aren't our only allies. By now, they had reached the castle. 
Toadette pushed the huge brown doors open and Luigi followed her through the entrance hall and down a corridor until they reached the council chambers. Back when you took Mushroom City back from the Koopas, we were able to seize a whole shipyard. May I present? The Mushroom Kingdom Fleet Toadette picked up a small remote that was lying on one of the tables and turned the projector screen on. Luigi stood gazing at the image of an battleship, mostly identical to the Koopa Troops' next-generation airships he had seen in Mushroom City. It retained the basic wooden hull and turrets, only it had been completely remodeled in a Mushroom Kingdom design. The figurehead of Bowser Jr. had been removed to be replaced with a large golden star, and the Bowser's castle-inspired superstructure was now designed after Peach's castle, with the spiked dome covering the bridge being replaced with a pointed red tower. The entire ship was also painted white. While it looked cheerful enough, as if he really expected anything designed by Toadette to look menacing, Luigi saw that it still appeared to retain all the weapons of the Koopa Troop ship. This was a battleship to be sure, a floating fortress that could hold its own against anything the Koopa Empire threw at it. W. Ow. Luigi said, blown away. I didn't think things had changed so much. We've all been giving it our all. Toad Bert said proudly, smiling and adjusting his glasses. This is our fight as well. We've got about twenty of these ships, ready to fight. Wario's commanding them now, although he's heading back after destroying the Koopa Troop Fortress at Flower Fields. And don't forget the new recruits. Male Toad chimed in, jumping up and down in excitement. We've got M pouring in by the dozen. Everyone's tired of living under Bowser's claw and anyone who knows how to fight or is willing to learn is pouring in. We've got resistance groups in every town and village, and they're growing. We've got thousands now. S. Slow down. Luigi exclaimed, unable to contain the smile on his face. He couldn't believe it. This was more than he had wished for. Thousands of recruits learning to fight, airships, a defended Toad Town. Toad Bert. Luigi said suddenly turning to him. I want you to help people find out about this in the other kingdoms. Could you find a way to? I don't know, advertise us, without the Empire finding out. Toad Bert smiled modestly. Well, it won't be perfect, but I'll do my best. He said. With Toadette's help, it should be easy. The Bean Bean Kingdom won't be much of a problem and I'm sure I can send messages out to a few of the others, as well. All the sectors that the Neo Empire is taking over will be the easiest, since they're in chaos. The old empire's lost its power but the new one hasn't quite established itself yet. It'll be easy to send the poor people a few messages. Good. Luigi nodded, feeling proud. Any problems around here? There's been a few patrols. Toadette replied. A battleship here and there, but nothing too major. I don't think the Koopas have the resources to attack us right now. Once some stupid patrol decided to try and get over the wall, but we fought them off. Nothing less than a fleet is going to take Toad Town now. Oh yeah. Luigi replied, leaping up and high-fiving Toadette. You know. He admitted, I'm really grateful, really. Without you, this never would have happened. It's no problem at all, Luigi. Male Toad smiled. I'll bet that in a year, the mushroom flag will be flying in every town in the kingdom. Luigi stood on the balcony of Peach's castle, looking out over the multicolored roofs of Toad Town. This was where he belonged, not hiding away plotting attacks with Fire Flower. If he was going to defeat Bowser, how could he do it as anybody but himself? This was the same fight, just on a larger scale. He'd assemble enough of an army to take on the Koopa Troop before rushing right to Koopa Central and engage Bowser in the duel of a century. 
then peace would be restored. Luigi turned his gaze away from the town to the hills beyond. Clouds lazily drifted through the sky, casting shadows on the tall multicolored rocks that dotted the plains. Everything was at peace. Everything was. There was something on the horizon, and it was getting closer. No, Luigi thought, as he watched it grow closer. It wasn't just one thing. It was several. The shapes were indistinguishable. There were a dozen Koopa battleships, en route to Toad Town. By the time Luigi had ran down the stairs, the alarm had already sounded. Toads were rushing every which way. Some were screaming while others tried to keep composure. Luigi desperately looked for some face he recognized. Finally, he saw Toadette near the door, ushering a crowd of toads in. Run for the basement! She urged them. You can get to Toad Town tunnels from there, if worse comes to worse, you can escape the city. It's the Koopas! Luigi exclaimed, running towards her pushing a toad out of the way. Yes, we know. Toadette said with a dry look. And they've got enough forces to crush this town, just like they did before. Luigi suddenly broke away from Toadette, running from the castle. In his mind, the sky was once again dark and fiery, filled with airships and smoke. On that day, in the Battle of Toad Town, everything had ended. And now it was happening again. No! Luigi shouted out loud. He owed it to Mario to stop this. When the Koopas had first come, Toad Town was unguarded and defenseless against the full might of the entire Koopa Kingdom. Now it was ready for war, and even if the new Koopa troop was stronger than the old, a dozen battleships couldn't equal 1,000 of the old airships, could they? Luigi, come on! came a high-pitched voice to his left. It was Billy, his face sweating. The Koopas are coming, you have to help us. Yeah. Luigi nodded. Even though his heart was pounding, there was no way he was backing out of this. He had done enough running for a lifetime. Luigi stood on the wall, tightly gripping his fists. He gave the town behind him a glance. Hopefully Toadette had managed to herd most of the non-fighters to safety. Her fighting skills were likely far higher than most of the trainees, so she'd be essential to keeping Toad Town defended. Luigi looked back at the ships growing closer. He was so used to imagining the old Koopa airships that he had forgotten just how huge the new battleships were in comparison, and each one looked like they had enough firepower to blast a mountain to bits. We have our own ships now, Luigi thought. Wario's headed to Toad Town right now. If he can get here in time. But Wario wasn't here. All there was was him, Toadette, and a bunch of toads whose only fighting experience was against Boom Boom's weak garrison. Koopa cruisers were descending to the ground, specially modified ones which opened up their hulls to deploy tanks and battalions. The Koopas were really going all out on this one. Mamma Mia! He breathed. General Flame gripped the armrests of his command seat, a maniacal smile on his face. Toad Town was ripe for the taking, spread out before him like an especially tantalizing feast. It appeared that the Toads had tried to construct some crude defenses, but those would be no match for the glory of the Koopa Empire especially when guided by his own hand. Toad Town's a great deal nicer now that Boom Boom's gone. Blue Shell commented, crossing his arms. The fat fool practically ruined the place. It'll be more than ruined when I'm done with it. Flame exclaimed. He snapped his fingers. Light em up, boys.
the bullet bills hit the wall, filling the air with smoke and flames. The wall shook roughly and Luigi nearly lost his footing. A couple of the toads screamed. Stay calm! Luigi shouting, hoping to keep it secret how he was practically freaking out himself. Out of the smoke Luigi saw the angry looking eyes of another bullet bill heading right towards him. Jump! He ordered, leaping into the air. It would have been better if he had had his hammer with him, but for now, his boots would have to do. Luigi stomped the bullet bill, shorting out its circuits and knocking it to the ground. He saw a few of the toads around him do the same, although there were a few explosions as some bullet bills found their mark. Luigi hoped the toads were all right, he and his brother had survived many bullet bill hits back in the day but they were a great deal hardier than the toads and a direct hit was an extremely painful experience regardless. By now, the bill blasters on the toad town wall were firing. As the smoke cleared, Luigi saw bullet bills on their side streaking towards the battleships, crashing into them and creating explosions on their hull. Catapults launched dozens of bob bombs which fell on the advancing army of Koopa troops and blew groups of them away. A few hit a tank and smashed a nasty dent into it. But the Koopa battleships and tanks returned fire. More bullet bills than Luigi could count launched in the direction of Toad Town. Some hit the wall, blasting large chunks out of it, while some aimed for the defenders. Luigi leapt into the air, stomping one, and then bounced off it to smash another, and then another, and then. With a whoosh, a bullet bill narrowly missed Luigi, crashing into a blue toad house and blowing a chunk of its roof off with a blast of flame. Fire crew, get on it! He heard Toad Bird shout. It seemed like the Toad Brigade had managed to get even some of the Toads who weren't battle-ready able to help. Luigi's feet touched the ground as another group of bullet bills whizzed overhead, crashing into some Toad's garden. The scent of burning wood and grass tingled Luigi's nostrils. By now, the Koopas had reached the wall. The tanks continued to fire and a huge chunk of wall collapsed into flames, causing the defenders to leap off in fright. Don't let them get through! Luigi shouted frantically, as the cannons on the wall fired again. Even as he said it, he was running towards the breach. A trio of charge and chucks led the attack, backed up by Hammer Bros. Luigi met the first one with a stomp, knocking off his football helmet, before finishing him with a punch to the face. The toads rushed to help him. A green toad was batted away by one of the charging chucks, only for another to stomp on him while he was distracted, while Toadette leapt on the other, bouncing off his head to crush one of the hammer bros. Koopa Troopas surged in, some ducking into their shells and launching themselves at the defenders to knock the toads away. Billy gave a shout kicking a Koopa away with a martial arts kick before spinning around and chopping one in the face. Bank Toad brought his pickaxe down hard on a Goomba, while Male Toad grabbed a lit bob bomb and chucked it through the hole in the wall to explode in the center of the invaders. Luigi lashed out with his foot, sending a hammer bro flying through the air to collapse against a burning Toad house, and leapt over an ice bro's pale blue fireball to smack a Paragoomba in the nose. Explosions boomed around him as the catapults sent another payload of bob bombs over the wall, even as some of the Koopa Empire battleships blew up two of the Toad Town Bill Blasters with well-aimed shots. Luigi leapt back onto the wall as a crowd of defenders moved to plug the leak. Some of the Toads had powered up with ice flowers and were rapidly freezing both the Gap and any Koopas who tried to get through in a desperate attempt to prevent any from entering Toad Town. Dodging another bullet bill, Luigi looked out at the army invading them. There seemed to be about 5,000 foot soldiers. Far from the largest army ever assembled, yes, but they were still vastly outnumbers. Luigi didn't know the exact number of battle-ready toads there were, but he estimated they had about 300. Even though Koopa troop training was mediocre at best, Every Goomba and Koopa was probably more skilled than his brave band of toads. 
he was going to have to be like a thousand of them and turn the tide in this fight. Luigi gulped, then took a deep breath. Then he leapt off the wall, right into the midst of the enemy army. A shy guy screamed as he landed next to him. Luigi wasted no time, stomping a red-shelled Koopa into his shell and kicking him to knock down a whole line of enemies. He ducked under a magic Koopa's enchanted blasts and brought his fist into the chest of a hammer bro, sending him flying. Luigi leapt through the air as a group of spiky Goombas charged him, landing on first a Koopa, then a shy guy, then a wiggler, and then on enemy after enemy, only stopping once a hammer almost caught him right in the head. It's still not enough, he thought. Luigi focused deep, feeling power building within him. Electricity crackled around his body as lightning formed around his fist. Thunder! He shouted, rushing through the army of Koopa and cleaving through the thickly placed army lines, knocking enemies of all times out of the way with his lightning-powered fists. A tank loomed before him, and it launched its bullet bills with a deafening boom. Luigi easily leapt over the missiles, and increased the power of the lightning in his fist so it radiated a blue glow over the heads of the Koopa troop soldiers around him. Then he plowing into the tank full force with his fist. There was a blue explosion and the tank was sent flying in several different pieces. Luigi paused to take a breath, before lashing out at the sledge bro who was closing in on him. General Flame watching the battle from the comfort of his command bridge. He could hear the rumble of cannon fire all around him as his own ship's guns fired, and bridge shook slightly as one of the Toad Town Bill blasters found its mark. For a tiny city with nobody but toads to defend it, Toad Town was taking a long time to fall. It seemed impossible to Flame that his soldiers were being unable to pierce the town. Even in the breach, they were being pushed back. The wall was surprisingly strong, so any further attempts to damage it were going slower than expected. It would fall, though, Flame was sure of that. Fires were popping up on Toad Town like little orange flowers blooming, and more and more bullet bills were striking the brightly colored houses. All that was in danger in the end was Flame's ego. It would not look so good to his colleges if it took him a week to conquer a rather small town filled with non-fighters, yes, but he'd still do it. It was obvious. Even Luigi would not change anything. They were simply too outnumbered. Eventually they'd run out of soldiers, or else perhaps the town would become so damaged by his continuous bombardment that they'd simply realize it wasn't worth defending anymore. Move the fleet closer to the town, Flame ordered. I want every house on fire. Yes, even the castle. There was another blue explosion on the battlefield as Luigi finished off a second tank. He was starting to become a problem. Why should that bother him, though? Snuffing out problems was his specialty. Blue shell, let's go. Flame said to his secretary, standing up. I'm going to engage Luigi. There was an irritatingly dry, skeptical look on Blue Shell's face. Ah, General Flame, sir, is that wise? The boomerang bro asked. I mean, we all saw the footage, didn't we? That man took on Prince Roy. And won. And, if you would forgive my bluntness, General. You are not Roy Koopa. Flame sniffed. No, but that is exactly how I will win. He exclaimed confidently, as his cannons let loose yet another round of bullet bills. Roy was stupid and overconfident. I will not make my mistake. Has nothing happened to my personal Koopa cruiser, Flare X, in the battle as of yet? Uh, not that I know of, sir. Blue Shell replied. Flare X is in the back of the fleet. I don't think it's been even hit. Ah, good. Flame nodded. I wouldn't want those prissy toads messing up my new paint job. I'll take a clown car over to it, right now. 
It's time to end this in one swift, deadly stroke. With a huge smile on his face, Flame left the bridge, knowing that his moment of glory was now at hand. Luigi ducked under a paratroopa swoop, before finishing a boomerang bro with a lightning-powered fist. Somebody threw a bob bomb at him, but it fell short, lighting up the battlefield with orange light. Luigi dodged a Magikoopa blast and ran at top speed, going into a long jump to soar over the heads of several Koopa troops, stomping first a Mega Goomba, then a Magikoopa, and finally a Koopa Troopa whose shell he sent spinning in the direction of a squad of Shy Guys. A tank rumbled towards him, firing, but Luigi jumping into the air, bounced off a bullet bill, and put both of his hands together to crush the tank in a lightning-powered slam. Debris flew around him. Luigi took a deep breath. Fighting like this was tiring. He wasn't sure how long he could keep it up. Luigi glanced behind him. All of Toad Town looked like it was on fire and bullet bills were streaking towards like-like comets. He wished he knew how well the defenders were faring. An enemy bullet bill vaporized one of the catapults, detonating its hall of bob bombs and blowing another hole into the wall. Oh no! Luigi shouted, turning around and punching a shy guy away. He had to get back there. Not so fast, green statch! Came a voice from up above. Huh. Luigi spun around to see a Koopa cruiser descending down towards him until it hovered around six meters above him. Unlike most Koopa cruisers, it was painted a gaudy bright red. You know, I don't think we've been formally introduced, said the speaker, a fire bro dressed in a military uniform who was standing on the deck, by the window screen. It appeared like he was in control of the ship despite not being down in the bridge so there was probably a secondary control panel up there. I am General Fortugas Flame, member of Koopa High Command and Governor of the Mushroom Kingdom. I'm afraid this is the last time we will ever meet, because soon you will be dead, courtesy of yours truly. The fire brawl laughed lightly. Luigi glared and tightened his fist as he faced down the Koopa Cruiser, with its huge golden Bowser figurehead. You aren't the governor of the Mushroom Kingdom anymore, Flame. He said. This kingdom belongs to us now. Like it's supposed to. Flame seemed to take great offense at the remark. Oh, really? He exclaimed. Have fun ruling your kingdom from the underwear. Two machine guns lowered from the bottom of the Koopa Cruiser and began to fire at Luigi. He quickly ran, ducking behind a tank for cover. The Koopa Cruiser flew over him with a roar of its engines, and more guns popped out of the side of its hull, launching fireballs at Luigi. One nearly scorched his leg, but missed by an inch, and Luigi backflipped to dodge the other. My Flare X is the next generation of military technology, Flame said proudly. I had the folks at Koopa Central Custom make it, just for me. Don't you feel the despair, Luigi? Not at all. Luigi shot back. His heart was pounding and he was afraid, really afraid for Toad Town, but despair was one emotion he wasn't feeling. Believing the people of Toad Town couldn't somehow manage to pull through would be betraying everything he stood for. Besides, when he had been beat within an inch of his life by Roy Koopa, could he really be scared of some loud shouting fire bro flying a red Koopa cruiser with guns? I'll change your mind. Flame shouted, bringing the Flare X around so it was facing Luigi. He gripped the controls with a maniacal expression on his face, the front guns firing as he angled it downwards as if to ram him. Luigi leapt over the bullets and onto the nose of the Bowser figurehead scrambling up it before leaping over Flame and onto the deck. Flame gave a little shriek as he turned around to face Luigi. I didn't say you could do that. He fussed, hurling a fireball at him. Luigi effortlessly ducked underneath it, sliding across the deck until he was closer to Flame. 
with a solid punch, Luigi sent the general reeling against the windshield. Take your army away from here! Luigi said, putting on his best threatening face as the battle continued to rage around him, bullet bills flying left and right. Flame made a sheepish face. Afraid I can't do that, Green Statch? He chuckled. See, when you've got such a big advantage in battle, you would be a coward to run away now, right? He moved to punch Luigi with a fiery fist, but Luigi dodged and grabbed Flame, throwing him to the ground. You re a not going to get me like that! He exclaimed. A second later, something out of his field of view went flying through the air and smacking him clean between the eyes. Unprepared for the sudden attack, Luigi was sent flying off the deck. He slid down the polished red hull of the Flare X and landed painfully on the ground. Must I do everything myself? came an irritated voice. Please don't try to steal the glory, Blue Shell. Flame replied crossly. Luigi got to his feet and brushed the dirt off his overalls. The boomerang had given him a bruise, but that was nothing. Luigi gathered electric energy around his fists. If he could take out the commander of the invasion, maybe this would stop. Let's heat him up with our missile bills! Flame exclaimed, pressing a button. The mouth on the Bowser head opened and four red-colored bullet bills fired out, locking onto Luigi. Luigi began to run, focusing power into his fists until they felt ready to burst. Then, as the missile bills were closing in, Luigi leapt through the air. He punched into the Flare X, his body covered in a blue air, and smashed out the other side like an arrow through paper. Behind him, the missile bills struck the ship, exploding as Luigi guided his fall, gracefully landing on his feet. The smoking Flare X shook unsteadily. Now look what you've done! Flame exclaimed, rushing over to the side to look at Luigi. Do you know how much this thing cost? Uh, I don't know. But you won't have to worry about getting a new one if you stop right here. Luigi shouted. Snappy comebacks weren't really his thing, he was used to having Mario around to provide those. Flame grinned devilishly. Ah, but you see, Luigi. He smiled. Even if you destroy the Flare X completely and reduce it to scrap metal, you still will not win the battle. I have thousands of troops. Once I earn the honor of being the man to finally sniff out the last of the people's loyalty to Princess Peach and the Mario Brothers, Emperor Bowser will award me personally. I'll have the seat of Grand General within a year and enough money to buy a fleet of Flare XS complete with a brand new flagship big enough to stick to dwarf your city. He's actually right. The boomerang bro beside him commented. I mean, I dunno about the flagship part but this army will definitely beat yours because you simply don't have enough forces to make any dent on us. Even if you manage to repel us day after day, you'll get tired eventually, and then we'll come in. Luigi paused. The boomerang bro, Blue Shell, he had heard Flame name him, was right. He was the only defender of Toad Town strong enough to pose a real threat to the Koopas. His Toads had surpassed all expectations but they were still a far cry from him and his brother. Even if Cobal had been here, it still wouldn't have been enough. Suddenly Luigi heard a large crash behind him. Uh, sir, we've got company. Blue Shell said bluntly. Huh? Flame exclaimed. There were crashes and explosions sounding all around the battlefield. Luigi turned around. W. What was happening? Had he somehow drifted off into the dream world or was that... Donkey Kong? The huge ape ran to a tank, lifting it with his huge arms and hurling it halfway across the battlefield. Beside him Luigi saw the old partner of Mario's, Lady Bao, 
smacking a hammer bro with her fan while a purple woman who seemed to be made out of clouds blew away dozens of Koopa minions with a gust of wind. His white cape flapping in the wind, Prince Peasley took out a score of flying enemies, while on the ground a shadow-like girl made a tank explode into fire while a trio of muscular Kremlings brawled Koopa after Koopa behind her. Luigi was so shocked he found that he couldn't move. A paracoupa swept above him in his shell, darting up to one of the huge battleships hovering above the battlefield and taking out its turrets one by one. Flame gave a terrified shout and Luigi glanced around. Behind the Koopa fleet, there was a second fleet approaching, one with brightly colored ships and a shining gold star figurehead. The fleet opened fire, striking the Koopa battleships before they had time to react. The newcomers moved closer, plowing through the minions. Luigi heard somebody land next to him. Ha <laughs> ha, long time no see, Big L. Came a familiar voice. Luigi's eyes widened. There he was, blue skin, leather jacket and now sporting some dark shades that completed the look, his first pupil, Kobal the delinquent Yoshi. Why? You're okay, was all Luigi could say as the chaos unfolded around him. Kobal shrugged. Stuff happened, he said. To cut a long story short, I sort of let a jailbreak on the Empire's maximum security prison. Guess you're glad to see some of those old faces again, eh? I... I... Luigi stammered. You are both so dead. Flame shouted from atop the flare axe. Cobal glanced at him. Hey, aren't you the governor who did that stupid show back in Mushroom City? I had forgotten you were still a thing. Flame looked like somebody whose entire life had just been insulted. Oh, yes, go ahead and insult me. He said. You'll be dead in a moment, so why does it matter? Cobal turned to Luigi. Luigi, can we take this guy? He asked. Luigi nodded. It filled his heart with new hope seeing Cobal assertive and strong like this. And the thought of all the heroes being released. This was a new dawn for the resistance, that was for sure. Yeah, he's weak. He said. Bet you've faced worse by now, right? Oh, you wouldn't know half of it. Cobal replied. Together, the two of them leapt onto the deck of the flare axe. Blue Shell instantly backed away, while Flame flared a fireball in his hand. Cobal licked it up with his tongue and spit it away into the air cockily. Still want to do this, Governor Sparkles? He smirked. Sir, I believe it's best we make a strategic retreat. Blue Shell advised calmly. With the strength of our new opponents and the enemy fleet at our rear, we are now at a disadvantage. If we don't leave right now, sir, I'm afraid you'll lose more than your colleagues' respect. Flame ground his teeth. Why? You'll pay for this, Luigi, Blue Yoshi, and all you stinking, filthy toads. He shouted, drawing a remote from his coat and pressing it. Before Luigi could do anything, two clown cars appeared and picked him and Blue Shell up, carrying them into the sky. Uh. All right then. Luigi said, he and Cobal now alone on the deck of the Flare Axe. The battle continued to rage around them, bob bombs and bullet bills exploding on each side, but as far as Luigi was concerned, the battle was already won. There are so many things I want to ask you. But now isn't the time, is it? He said. The depression he had felt after learning what Fire Flower truly was had been completely washed away. Cobal, the person who he had passed his skills onto, had become a person who he and Mario could be proud of. He had obviously gone through quite some stuff, last he had heard from him, he had been drafted into the Koopa Troop and was trying to infiltrate it, although obviously that wasn't the case anymore. 
What mattered was that Cobal was back and during his time gone, had struck the Kupa Empire a blow they'd never recover from. No, definitely not the right time. Cobal agreed as a tank launched a bullet bill at the wall. Luigi hoped Flame would withdraw the troops soon, but it certainly wasn't a bad idea to give him some extra convincing. Hey, wanna go kick some shells with me, old man? Cobal asked as he and Luigi faced over the battlefield. As they leapt from the damaged Flare X, both of them knew that the second battle of Toad Town was almost over. And this time, the victory wouldn't go to Bowser. <laughs>